Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today I'm going to go over one of my favorite styles of rifles for the Eastern Woodlands, and that's the Lever Scout. So the Lever Scout is based on the Scout Rifle concept by Jeff Cooper in the 1980s. His idea was a general purpose rifle, not too heavy, not too long, not too light a caliber, not too heavy a caliber, that just fit a general use of a rifle. So the Lever Scout doesn't quite meet all the criteria, but it's an inexpensive option, and in a woodland setting like this, it actually shines. So the caliber for the Scout rifle was originally a 308. It was designed to have a medium caliber, 30 caliber is about the best for this. With a 30 caliber, I can go up in bullet size or down in bullet size depending on my game. Common is the key. The original Scout rifle was 308. That's a military round, super common to get. Uh, I can adapt bullets, like I said, for a faster velocity round, like the 300 Winchester Magnum, all the way down to the lower uh, velocity rounds, such as the 308 and some of the plinker rounds. This does not fit the bill, but the 3030 is super common. 3030 is the classic cartridge that you're going to find in every gas station and every sporting goods store throughout the rural parts of America. So because this is still a 30 caliber, I do have the wide range of bullets available as far as thicker jacketed bullets for heavy game, light skinned uh, hollow point ammo, as well as some plinker ammo. But however, because this is a tubular magazine, the rounds are lined up primer to primer. So they're kind of sitting like this in the tube. And every recoil, they're kind of doing one of these numbers. So because of that fact, the 3030 in its Winchester, Marlin, uh, Henry, and the other uh, actions of this type, you are stuck with a round nose or a blunt nose uh, projectile. Now it is possible to use a Spitzer point bullet, uh, but that's a way, way advanced level. Uh, if you did that, you were only using this as a two-shot rifle. You've got one in the chamber one in the magazine. You do not have the full ability to use your magazine capacity if you were to load Spitzer ammo into a 3030 cartridge. Another criteria for a Scout rifle is his original light rifle was one meter in length. So that's about 39 inches. This is a little bit shorter than that. This is a 20 inch. This is a standard uh, carbine. They do make these in 16s. They do make these in 24s. 20 is standard. Uh, you can see how much handier it is to have a, a short rifle like this. So being that this is a general purpose rifle, this is something that you would carry not just when you were hunting. You would have this with you uh, in a four-wheeler, in your truck, anything like that, or just carrying it around on a general wood scout. Thick brush like this, this is how the lever actions got their uh, name as a brush gun. Shorter barrel, shorter overall length of the rifle, lets you mount the rifle, swing through, in thick areas that are common throughout the east and the south. So the original weight on a scout rifle is also spec'd out. It's spec'd out at three kilos. That's about six point something, six and a little less than six and a half pounds. The lever scout does not meet that criteria, especially when you go with the scout scope, the mount, and a bunch of the accessories on the rifle. If this was a straight out of the factory 30-30, then you're closer to that six pound range. But that's one disadvantage that you get with the lever scout in this configuration is the added weight. To the forward mount scope, uh, backup sights were on Jeff Cooper's requirement for the scout rifle. This particular one, this is Wild West lever guns. I've got a rear aperture sight with a post front sight. So it's not always just in case of a scope failure. The backup sights are also available in different situations. You're not always going to be, you know, sitting in a woods in November doing a traditional deer hunt with this. Being a general purpose rifle like this, that stretches it into defense at times. And in that situation, this is a quick release scope mount, and I've got ghost ring sights for quick target acquisition when needed. Another missing link from the Lever Scout to the true Scout rifle is the fact that it does not have a more practical modern sling. Uh, Jeff's original concept was a Ching sling that is a three-point mount where you can sling up, keep tension on the rifle, and have a steadier hold. Uh, this is a two-point sling 
doesn't quite work that way. This is a nice soft leather. This is a perfectly fine carrying strap for the rifle. Uh, it's not too uh, fancy, no big deal with it. It's a nice broken soft leather sling that gives you multiple sling options. Quickly removable, so if I'm in thick brush I can slip this thing off real quick. But with the traditional lever action platform, if I sling up, there should be tension here. So when I sling up and get the rifle into my shoulder uh, pocket, I'm putting tension on the barrel. That's a big uh, no-go. So with a real scout rifle, the sling itself is mounted to the stock. The barrel's free-floating. You can see with this, I'm attached to the magazine tube, which in turn is attached to the barrel. So when I apply pressure, in this case it's gonna be applying pressure to the left, it's gonna be pulling my ammo to the left. So uh, that's a big negative is the fact that you can't sling up for longer shots. So accuracy was also specced out by Colonel Cooper. So he required a 2 MOA, uh, that's two minutes of angle accuracy for the rifle. His specs were uh, a man-sized target at 400 meters, I believe, 450 meters. That's a stretch for the 30-30, but a 2 MOA group is completely within the realm of this rifle. Two MOA, is, two MOA is not that big a deal, and if you're looking at deer-sized game, two MOA, that's a four-inch group at 200 yards. And if you're going to call a eight-inch circle a archer's target for a deer, if you take that four-inch group at 200 yards, that stretches it out to 400 yards. Now, the ballistics of the 30-30 is a little bit slow for that, but it is possible with the right shooter, but that's not really this rifle's niche. So being that this is a general purpose rifle, it's nice to be able to grab the rifle either out of your vehicle, out of the scabbard of your 4x4, uh, take it off the gun rack and walk into the woods without having to worry about grabbing extra ammo and everything. So onboard ammo was a requirement. The original Scout rifle had a magazine, detachable box magazine, back in the stock. Some of the original prototypes based on the 600 Remington had a slidable magazine compartment. Uh, if you saw my video on the Model 24 Savage, that's a takedown survival over and under rifle pistol or a rifle shotgun combo, that has a compartment in the buttstock for extra ammo. So something similar to that was the original concept rifle that was a Remington 600. With the 3030 Lever Scout, not so much. You know, this is super common. These are available at Walmart and everywhere else. You keep a couple rounds in here, they get worn out. They make higher grade leather options, but I don't have them. So I've used this so much that it really doesn't hold rounds that well anymore. There are other ways to hold rounds. I believe this company is no longer in business, but this is a wrist cuff. So you can keep ammo close by, but it's generally not as protected and not as uh, easily accessed as the original Steyr Scout. So now that we know what we're talking about when I say Lever Scout, we'll talk more about what the rifle's intended function is. This is a general purpose lightweight rifle. So because it's short, because it's light, it's not something that you're gonna leave at home. With an adequate power that we were talking about with the 30-30 cartridge, uh, I don't have to worry about extreme blast like you would with some of the higher Win Max. The barrel's going to last longer. The brass case is going to last longer. Also, you can, you're going to lose less meat on a typical deer shot. Uh, super high velocity rounds, they'll actually cause bloodshot on the shoulder. If you hit the shoulder wrong, even a 308 will do it. Uh, where the bullet actually impacts the animal causes the blood vessels to ver burst, and a lot of times that whole shoulder's gone. Not so with the 3030. Even if I had a regular deer cartridge in it, I did not have some of my lighter uh, subloads in. Small game, uh, whatever presents itself, you know, be it a quail or a rabbit, a uh, raccoon, possum, you're not going to do as much damage with a mild caliber like the 3030. So being that this is a mid-caliber general purpose rifle, it's going to really excel at two things, and that's going to be hunting as well as defense. So. As far as hunting goes, this is a general purpose rifle. So if I grab this rifle and hunt anywhere in the eastern woodlands, 
the biggest game I'm really going to encounter is going to be black bear. And 3030 is proven against black bear. One thing that the general purpose rifle is not is doesn't really work well with specialized hunting. For example, uh, groundhog hunting, that's one of the few times in this area that you can really stretch a rifle out. Four, five, six hundred yard shots at groundhogs are not all that uncommon. General purpose rifle, again, that requires a specialty tool. The same with antelope, or if I was to go elk hunting, moose hunting, that is a specialty hunt, and that would require a special rifle for me to do it. So speaking of defense for this, uh, this would make a great camp defense against either two-leg or four-leg problems. The 3030 offers, this is six rounds, so it's six rounds just as fast as I can shoot it. Uh, I'm not a cowboy action shooter, but I can still sh uh, work through the ammo pretty quick with this thing. Six rounds is plenty of shots to solve most problems. Don't kid yourself that you need a 30-round banana magazine to, to solve most de self-defense problems with a rifle. So sticking with the 3030 cartridge for self-defense, the 3030 is very similar to the 762 by 39 That's the caliber of the AK-47 which is the most prolific uh, fighting rifle in the world. So with this 3030, I have power, I have bore size, and I don't have excessive power. The more recoil I've got, the slower my follow-up shots are going to be. And this is just a happy compromise. So one thing that's really hard to describe to you is the advantages of a forward mount scope like this. The intermediate mount scope, what it does is several things for you. When I hold the rifle up and shoulder it, I don't have a scope close to my eye. So I have peripheral vision on either side of the rifle. Because it's a two power scope, I don't have that uh, target loss where I'm seeing something at one size and then all of a sudden I magnify it nine times and I've lost the picture of where it is. When I shoulder this rifle, I can still see perfectly clear immediately to the right of the scope and immediately to the left of the scope. So I can actually track deer walking into my scope and as they pass through they just get magnified two times and I can break the shot. The fact that the scope is farther away from my face, uh, it totally eliminates scope eye. Uh, with an experienced shooter it's no big deal, but a lot of kids, you're, you're hunting back and forth on the stock looking for a sight picture. A lot of that problem is because of a higher magnification, magnification scope but there is zero chance of that happening with this intermediate scope. Now, the traditional scout rifle is a bolt action. A bolt action is a stronger action. The lever action is a faster action. So as far as defense goes, the lever action is pulling a, uh, winning that battle a little bit. But with the bolt action, I'm able to go up to a bigger caliber. Uh, it's not as important with this lever scout, but with the intermediate mount scope and a bolt action, I have full access to my uh, ejection port to load it or in case I have a malfunction. How many times have you seen you know, the classic Remington 700 with a 3 to 9 scope on it and the bolt handle is almost touching the scope when you lift it up? A lot of times people have modified their bolt throw technique just because they can't get a full hand on the, the ball of the uh, bolt. So loading, unloading, everything's clean, everything's clear, as well as my uh, center balance is moved forward with this. It makes it a lot easier to carry the rifle and makes it more comfortable in the woods. So this is just one configuration of a lever scout. Uh, it's ambidextrous in certain models. Winchester has a top eject. So right or left-handed shooters can use it. With this, I've got an angle eject to the right. So left-handers could use this. It's going to be a little bit of a problem. Savage has a rotary box magazine as well as Browning. So you could use a lever action. And both of those two styles allow you to use a higher caliber than the 3030. So that's just something to think about. A major disadvantage to this, uh, it's not so much the rifle itself, it's regulation. The 3030 is not legal for deer in my state. Uh, there's a way around that and I'm going to show you that right now. So there is a way around uh, the 3030 now being legal and that is the switch calibers. This is a straight wall cartridge. This is a 4570. This is legal in Ohio. So besides the 4570 I could go with the 357, 44, 44 mag. 
So I'm keeping the characteristics of the 3030. I'm keeping the intermediate eye relief scope. I've still got my backup sights, but I'm not going to consider this a scout rifle anymore because of the weight and the length and the caliber. So the big bore 4570 like this, I've lost a lot of the versatility. I'm experimenting with this, trying to find some handles where I can gain that back. But the rifle itself is larger and heavier than the 336 Marlin, besides the fact that this is a 24 inch barrel. So they do make modern 18 inch barrels and 20 inch barrel 4570s. This is a pre-safety model. So the new ones have a cross bolt safety. I don't particularly enjoy the cross bolt safety. I think it's an abomination to the lever action itself. So I don't have any. Neither of my rifles have them. Uh, I don't want to bob the barrel on this rifle quite yet. So what this does is lets me use some of the advantages to the lever scout without making a full commitment, starting to chop this rifle up and make it something that it isn't. Now, if you lived somewhere, maybe the Northwest, some of the Northwest states where there are elk, moose, bear, like I have raccoons and white-tailed deer, a big caliber like this makes a hell of a lot more sense. At that point, you are less concerned with two-legged predators and your real concern is going to be grizzly bear, you know, some of the bigger black bears, as well as Kodiaks, rutting moose, rutting elk. So in that case, I will put up with the extra weight to have a fight-stopping large bore lever action available to me. So with my limited camera skills, I was trying to figure out a way to show you what I'm seeing through the intermediate eye relief scope, how you have such a broader peripheral vision view. Uh, I can't shoulder the rifle. I'm not going to be able to shoot the rifle, but it's going to be half-ass at best. But it just gives you some clue of what I'm seeing. All right, so right now the rifle's sitting actually on the tripod, and the camera's where my eye would be. So you can see as I track along, there's the stump. I can follow a deer through an opening. I can be on a deer and if another one came into view say a larger buck came into view back where the stump is I can make a quick transition I'd go to the top of that log I can track down the log so I know that's not the best example but maybe you can kind of see what I'm seeing when I'm shooting an intermediate eye relief scope especially in the thick woodlands like this it allows me to track game as they're moving I can see if a larger deer it comes in to one of my peripheral vision sides as I'm focused on a smaller deer. It allows me to make a quick change. It allows me to hold the rifle in a set point ahead of moving game and allow them to walk into my crosshairs. So tons of advantages with this. It really shines into thick woods like this. But it's a versatile scope system uh, that can be adapted to other uses. All right, so this has just been a brief overview of the Lever Scout. Uh, you're going to see more of uh, my interpretation of the Lever Action Rifle and how it fits into the modern rifleman, as well as I'll go over some of the loading stuff and ways to get the most out of one of these. Till next time, this has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you next time.